Mom, can we have NPM Blackout? Aw, oh, sweetie, you have NPM Blackout at home. Yeah. Hello, what's up? I'm Brian here, doing another video for you guys, and this time we've got a new official Transformers movie masterpiece reveal. We knew that we were getting this, and we kind of speculated that it was going to be Blackout because there has been long time rumors that we were supposed to get an MPM Blackout. In fact, I think it's been about maybe even more than a year, actually. So, what's exciting about this is they're celebrating the 15th anniversary of the Transformers live-action movies, starting with the 2007 film. And what's cool about this is, this is the very first character that we see in live-action in any Transformers movie. So, it's pretty cool to introduce this, and what's funny about this is... The Bumblebee, which was the first MPM figure, excluding the two Hunt for the Decepticons repaints, had the 10th anniversary label. So we're going from 10 to 15, it's been five years since we had this line, and I feel like we don't have enough. I feel like we need to get into some other movies as well, like Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon, but we're still struggling with the first movie crew. We still need, uh, let's say, Brawl and Bone Crusher. But what's also cool about this is that we don't have too many Decepticons. We've got Megatron, Starscream, and Barricade, and that's pretty much it. So this adds not one, but two Decepticons to the ranking, because it also comes with Scorpnock, much like the Studio Series figure. And speaking of which, it is a lot like the Studio Series figure. In fact, you can tell that the bones of this is implemented in this version of Blackout. Now, some people really don't like that because they feel it's been cheaped down, but I'm going to say that I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to frame this design based on the Studio Series figure. I mean, people talk about how certain Generations figures are downscaled versions of masterpieces, so it kind of goes the other way around, and I thought that was funny. But not only that, I do like the Studio Series Blackout, but I do feel like it should have changed a few things. There's a couple of kibbly bits up here that I feel could have been altered. I don't like the sandals on the feet. I, I think that's weird. And I feel like the arms could have been better. They're just blocks with kibble on them. But on this, I feel like it cleans it up and it does so well at it that I almost think that it's better than some of the Weijang or upgrade kits being added to the Blackout figure. And that's just my honest opinion. I don't know about the price. Maybe you get your value better on the Weijang figure. But honestly, I think for the design, not looking at the price, this is probably the best one you're going to get. Uh, taking a look at the helicopter mode, it definitely reminds me of that original helicopter. And uh, it does look pretty good. Of course, you can see the transformation bits. You can see the panel lines. And there are similarities between that and the Studio Series, of course, like I mentioned. But you will notice that there are some interesting and different takes on this. There's additional hinges, and you'll notice that on the back propeller more than anything. You will also notice that it has additional gunners that you can attach to the bottom. And it does have flare effects that you can attach, which is pretty cool. I do like the fact that NPM is introducing flare effects, and I would like to see that continue with some more figures. I just think that adds something. I also like the transparent green on the top of the canopy. I just think that adds a little something. And I think the color is fine. I think they could have gone with a deeper color, maybe a more metallic or shiny color. But I will say this, go to the Weibo video. I will link that down in the description below. And it seems to be a lot darker. Now that could have been the lighting, but it does make it look better. Some people saw the initial stock images and thought, oh, that looks terrible. But when you go to the Weibo video, it looks a lot better. Maybe it still doesn't impress you, but it does look so much better in hand. And when you see the lighting and you see the dark colors involved with it, it just, it really pops. Anyways, so the helicopter mode does look pretty good. You've got the spinning propeller and it seems a little looser compared to the Studio Series figure, which is a good thing. I like the spinning propeller. And it's also got another additional thing. When you open the back of it, you can have Scorpnock crawl out, which is kind of a thing that the original figure had, but it was more just you sneak it into the kibble underneath and they didn't really tuck away anything. But what's cool about this is there are panels underneath to finish off the alt mode, which is something that people hated with the original figure because all he had was the guts just spilling out. No, this cleans it up and it looks fantastic. And not only that, all the panels still incorporate to the figure itself. So that's pretty awesome. 
And what I'll also point out is Scorpnock is painted a lot better. I feel like they could have improved Scorpnock a little bit more, maybe give him, I don't know, leg articulation or something, but the arms can move up and down this time around, which I think is a plus. I think maybe could have had additional joints at the tail, but overall, I think they did a pretty fair job. And like I said, you see the tail of the chopper, and you can see a couple of additional hinges, and I do believe that the back propeller will transform into the figure rather than just you remove it, so that's pretty cool. Taking a look at the robot mode, now again, a lot of people didn't like this because it just looked like the Studio Series figure, but again, I think it cleans it up very well, and again, go to that Weibo video, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but you really should because, I mean, it, it really stands out. It also looks a little more blue in these images compared to the original, but uh, one thing that I really do like is the paint work, because on the original figure, I know I repeat myself over and over again, but the face was painted well, the rest of it didn't really go with the head, because he had the silver paint applications that looked nice, but the rest of the figure just had it very sparsely. This one, it seems very consistent, and not only that, you had some copper details. On the EMP above his head, you've got some lines and wires in there. On the arms, you can see it. I think that the shaping of the torso is done wonderfully. When you see the, the front of the canopy, it actually separates from the sides, so it feels like it integrates and transforms more into the torso. It feels like it actually transforms with it. It does have some panels that fold up to the feet, but considering what they're doing with the helicopter mode and cleaning it up, I think it's fine. I also do like the fact that there are more panels on the side of the arm that complement it and actually make it look like it incorporates into the figure rather than just, oh, it's a block with a bunch of stuff on it. I, I just really like this. And another complaint that I had was these side panels that just kind of hang off and were on a weird angle. This one cleans it up very nicely, so I do like that. Also, this figure should be a lot bigger, and there's a separation on the toes. It doesn't have that weird panel underneath, which was a big concern. It really does seem like they just took the Studio Series Blackout, heard some of the complaints, and then just did this. Because you even have the wrist articulation, which was a big complaint with this figure. Uh, also, another cool thing is that it does have a gunner on the chest that folds up, so I thought that was really cool, and you can still uh, incorporate the blast effect, so that's very nice. Uh, you can see it right here, you know, you got the gunner. It also has a separate propeller piece that's not the back propeller, that's its own thing, and you can attach that to the side of the hand, which looks a little weird, but eh, that's still fine. And you can plug the gunners on the side of the arm, because of course, and yeah, I I'm just vastly impressed with it, and... Let's take a closer look at just the figure in the silhouette now. One concern that I do have about it is some of the joints. I did see during the video that the arm drooped at a certain point, but I think it's going to be fine overall. And there were some ratchets in the toy as well, so, you know, you're, you're going to be able to pose with that. In fact, some of the poses he had for the figure were really nice. And if you do want another excuse to get this figure, if you're not satisfied with the fact that Grindor is just a repaint of Blackout, even though they do look similar, people say that apparently Grindor is a lot bigger than Blackout. If you're concerned about this, I'm pretty sure that this MPM figure is going to be a lot bigger than the original figure, so... If you want something like that, there you go. I know it's not the exact helicopter, but it, I mean, it's so similar. Why nitpick over it? Anyways, I like this a lot. I'm very satisfied with it. I've always liked Blackout, so yeah, I like it a lot. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it because I don't have a lot of NPM figures, but it's caught my interest, so there's that. Anyways, what do you guys think? Please comment below. Let me know. Please like, comment, share, subscribe to all those fun doodads, and we'll see you guys next time. All Spark TV. Now that's just prime.